is Map 152. We're looking at the first part of Section 2.4, and we are going to think about how to find the arc length. So, in other words, if we have some function and uh, we know it runs from A to B, we want to know how long that curve is. How, like, if you were walking this, how far would that distance be? You know, let's start with thinking about what if it was a straight line? What if, uh, if it was just Look at that, that's perfectly straight. And we have these points, right? Like uh, I start at some X point and I get the Y point for it. And I, and I go up to some other X, right? I have some, and then I get some other Y for that. And those are, those are my points. I'm gonna rewrite this. Now, if I wanna know how long this was, just think about the Pythagorean theorem, right? I could say how far over and how far up does it go? I have some change in x and I have some change in y. And I know that from the Pythagorean theorem, uh, I'll just call this d the, the distance. I know that d squared equals uh, change in x squared plus change in y squared, which means that d is the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. If it's curved, what I could do is I could do a bunch of little approximations, right? Like I'll make this curve a little more. From here to here, I have I could approximate it that way. From here to here, I could approximate it that way. From here to here, I could approximate it that way. So I have these little changes in x, um, and I'm a little bit off, right? Because I'm getting this length of these hypotenuses and adding them together. But we know in calculus, we can basically start to let that run to infinity and we'll get there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. So I'm going to think of this, this is square root of x squared. And I'm going to think of this as um, square root of y squared times square root of x squared over square root of x squared. So notice that. This is just like multiplying it by one. Um, and I did this because then what I can do is I can factor a, a change in x squared out of this. So I could think of this as the square root of the change in x squared times. And if I divide it out from here, that gives me a one plus, and this gives me change in y squared over change in x squared. And since these are multiplied together under here, I could think of this as the square root of this, and square root of that. And square root of something squared is just that. So now I have square root of x, I'm sorry, not square root, uh, change in x times the square root of one plus, and since these are both squared, I could write this as change in y over change in x, that whole thing is squared. Oh, things are definitely looking up for me here. So notice, notice what I have here now is this change in y over change in x, that's basically the slope. And so each of these, depending on my x value, would give me these lengths, each of these lengths. So if I think about this, I could let this say, how many uh, lengths do I want? Oops. And I'm just going to add them all up. And actually, if I think about this change in y over change in x, that's just the slope at that point. So change in y over change in x is really the slope of that function at x, and then it's squared. And again, since this is calculus, let's let that run to infinity. In other words, let these changes in x get really, really small. These get closer and closer and closer. And what happens? This converges to the beautiful. And that's how I can find my, uh, my arc length. And uh, what's great is I could do it in the x direction. I could also do it in the, in the y direction. Like if everything was solved for y. So let's figure out the arc length for this. A curve would look something like this. And it's running from 0 to 1. And I just want to know how long that is. I'm going to need a couple pieces. I'm going to need the derivative, and I'm going to need it squared. And then I can set it up into here. So if there's my function. Derivative of this 
is uh, is that. And so then now if I square that, I square the 3, I get a 9. I square the x to the 1 half, I get x. Okay, so there it is. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to just plug it into there, run it from 0 to 1. So I should have this integral from 0 to 1 of this 1 plus 9x dx. And so notice what I used was this. I had to take the derivative, and then I had to square it to get myself there. All right, and so then now let's figure this out. Let's evaluate this thing. Uh, I'm going to do some u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal 1 plus 9x. So du would equal 9 dx. So uh, a ninth of du give me that dx. And I've got this. Uh, I'm going to change these bounds. So when, when this is a 0, I plug it in for x, and this becomes a 1. When this is a 1, I plug it in for x, and this becomes a 10. The root of u du, and I've got a 1 ninth of it. So I've got this. So I'm going to take that 1 ninth out, u to the 1 half. And so let's do some evaluating this. That 2 thirds can come out of there, so that's 2 27ths. And then I have this u of 3 halves. Um, 10 to 1. Now, now you could shove that in your calculator and just get an answer, but we could be a little, a little more clever than that. Um, 10 to the 3 halves. That is um, the square root of 10 cubed. And now if I cube something, I'm multiplying it by itself three times. So that's root 10 times root 10 times root 10, which is 10 root 10. So this would be 2 27ths times 10 root 10 minus, and I've got to plug a 1 in there. It's just a 1. And so there it is. That is the exact value of the length of that. If you put that in your calculator, you get somewhere around 2.27, somewhere around there. Let's do a couple more of these. Now, sometimes this interval, we can't do it, and we just have to shove it into um, some software to do the work for us. All right, so we want to find the art length of sine of x from 0 to pi. So we'll need the derivative, and then we will need that squared. So if you're going to run this from 0 to pi of the square root of 1 plus cosine squared x dx. All right. Uh, so I think that this is a case where I'm going to just let the software do some work for me. I'm going to go to this integral calculator right here. And so if you'll notice, uh, notice where I'm at. Uh, from here, I can type in what my equation was and it will, uh, what my function is that I want to take the integral of. And mine was the square root of uh, 1 plus cosine squared. It's in the caret. And notice it puts the, uh, it puts the dx in there for me of x. So notice, here's what I typed, here's what I got, and I'm running it from 0 to pi, so 0 to pi. Do magic. And it looks like I get about 3.820. Yeah, that's good enough. So again, if you can't uh, get there on your own, you know, use the use the tool for it. Sometimes we just don't have the tools to do these integrals yet. All right, arc length. I'm going to show you this one because there is some algebra involved. <laughs> so we're going to need the derivative and then to square that derivative. So the derivative of this minus is that and now when i square this it's this and so if i multiply that out because i'm going to i'm going to square it so i'm going to get this this just algebra wise for something multiply it by itself x times x is x to the 
fourth x squared times x squared. Um, x squared times negative one fourth over two x is just negative one fourth. And then if I multiply this again, I get negative one fourth again. X to the negative two times x squared is is uh, is one, right? Because it's x, x to the negative two is x squared on the bottom. Divide by one. And then negative one fourth times negative one fourth is positive one sixteenth. Uh, x to the negative two times x to the negative two is one over x to the fourth, or x to the negative fourth. And notice those combine to give me my negative one. Woo so there's that. That's that. And so then now I have all my pieces. I want to know that this length, it's going from 1 to 3, and it is the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, x to the fourth minus a half plus 1 16th x to the negative fourth dx. And I can combine up some things. 1 minus a half is positive 1 half. And now here's where it becomes uh, clever. Like at this point, you could shove it into that integral calculator, you know, your technology or whatever. But I, this is actually a perfect square. Like this is x squared plus x to the negative 2 squared. Right when it was negative, it, we got a negative one half in the middle. If this was positive, this would be a positive one half in the middle, just like this. So this part, this x to the fourth plus one half plus one sixteenth x to the negative fourth is this, and that's being square rooted. But something squared and square rooted, the square and the square rooted undo each other. So now I have this, and then you can do that. You can do the rest of that integral. I just wanted to show you that little piece of an algebra trick. And I'm going to do one more just in the y direction this time. And notice I have something in terms of y, and then this range is in terms of y. Everything's going to feel the same except we have a dy uh, instead of a dx. Square it. y squared squared is y to the fourth. And again, we're finding the arc length of this shape from one to two. As y runs from one to two, that would be like height, right? One to two. And it's a square root of one plus the square of the derivative. So 81 y to the fourth. In terms of y, we're not going to have the tools to do that by hand. So we will go ahead and throw that into some technology. Well, that is arc length. And what's great is we're going to build on arc length uh, when we start to talk about the surface area of a shape under rotation as, as well. So this will become the tool for the next thing that we talk about in the next section. Give the, give the problems a try in the assignment set and uh, message me with any questions or post them in the forum.